To talk more about the massacre in Charleston, in addition to Dr. Raphael Warnock in Atlanta, we're joined in Philadelphia by Anthea Butler, associate professor of religion and Africana studies at the University of Pennsylvania, author of Women in the Church of God and Christ, Making a Sanctified World. Uh, professor Butler has just written a new piece for The Washington Post. Its headline, Shooters of Color Are Called Terrorists and Thugs. Why are white shooters called mentally ill? Um, Anthea Butler, would you continue on this point? Talk about the issue of yes. who we call terrorist and who we don't. Yeah, thank you, Amy, for having me. I really respect the show. Um, the reason why I believe that whites are often, and white shooters, especially male white shooters, are always called mentally ill, is that it's a soft peddling of part of the structure of racism in America. Whenever you hear about a Muslim um, doing something or suspected of doing something, or a black man or a black woman, they are always terrorist. It's terrorist activity. They are pejorative words that are used to describe them. They are dehumanized. They are, you know, the vilest people on earth. When somebody white does something in this country, there are excuses. White youth who are young men, as Dylan Roof is, are called boys. They're, you know, infantilized. A young man like Trayvon Martin is called a hunk, hulking young man. It's a, a clear sign of the racist infrastructure underneath this country. And part of that has had to do with the media and these portrayals and the, the constant drumbeat of all of these kinds of racial stereotypes and religious stereotypes that have caused us harm in this nation. In, in terms of, uh, of uh, uh, Dylan Roth in particular, he, he will not only, he's been, uh, you know, they normally have a, what the, the police call the perp walk when they allow the, the cameras to shoot them being brought in or out of a station. Here you see a situation where he's handcuffed but also has a bulletproof vest on him, uh, which uh, I, I don't recall uh, being the situation, for instance, with the, uh, with the young men in the Boston uh, Marathon bombing or, or many of the these other incidents that we've had, even the uh, images that the media is allowed to see uh, of, uh, uh, of these accused killers, uh, is very different. Yeah, no, exactly. And one of the things I thought uh, yesterday about the picture of Dylan Roof was that the putting the vest on him made him seem somewhat frail when this was the same person who sat in a Bible study for an hour and then shot everybody dead. There's nothing frail about his terrorist and his racist behavior that he did. And so this is kind of this, I, you know, the sense in which whiteness is such protect, is so protected in these sort of, they don't even understand, I think, how much they do it. It's, it's just ingrained. It is a practice of law enforcement, media, and others in this nation. And what's happening now, and I think this is really important to, to stress, is that the impact and the, demo, the democratization of everybody having social media, having a camera on their phone, being able to show these discrepancies and show things in a profoundly different way has changed the perception in this nation, and people are starting to see the truth. On Although Thursday, some of them who are in my Twitter feed... We'll On Thursday, it. Fox News host Steve Ducey expressed incredulity that the Charleston shooting was a hate crime. He and his guest, Pastor E.W. Jackson, suggested the shooter attack the historically black church for its biblical views, not because of racism. This is E.W. Jackson and Steve Ducey. I'm deeply concerned that this gunman chose to go into a church because there does seem to be a rising hostility against Christians across this country mm -hmm. because of our biblical views. Uh, and some look at it as, well, it's because it was a white guy, apparently, and a black church. Uh, but you made a great point just a moment ago about the hostility toward Christians. So per and it was a church. So maybe that's what they're talking about. They haven't explained it to us. Well, yeah, I, I don't know whether that most people jump to conclusions about race. I long for the day when we stop doing that in our country. Yeah. Uh, but we don't know why he went into a church, but he didn't choose a bar. He didn't choose a basketball court. He chose a church. So that's Fox. Dr. Raphael Warnock, um, 
This issue of domestic terrorism and the issue of hate crime, immediately the mayor of Charleston and the police chief of Charleston, both white, before Ruff was caught, but after the massacre, said this is a hate crime, uh, very straightforwardly. But the fact is that, um, that South Carolina is one of five states, along with your state, Georgia, I think Wyoming and Indiana. Um, uh, these states do not have hate crime legislation. Can you talk about what it means to be a hate crime and whether you think this is outright terrorism and what that would mean if we called it that? Uh, th this is clearly a hate crime. Uh, <clears throat> the perpetrator said as much. Uh, he, he has demonstrated. We've seen the uh, pictures of him on his Facebook page uh, brandishing the flag of Rhodesia, now uh, Zimbabwe, in the days when it was basically a white supremacist state, uh, the old apartheid South Africa. So we, we know something about uh, the ideology uh, of this uh, uh, deeply uh, misguided person. Uh, but it's also an act of terror. And it has to be connected historically uh, to the long reign of terror uh, perpetrated against African American communities. Uh, he said uh, to one of the survivors, uh, Yes, I'm going to allow you uh, to survive so you can tell the story. Well, we have to ask, well, what, what work does that story do? I'm, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how the lawyers. Uh, push back and forth and, and uh, discuss uh, the technicalities around this. But it's clear to any, anybody who's looking at this, it seems to me, that, that uh, this is an, an act of terror uh, committed not—and uh, I'm a Christian, not, not because these people were Christian, uh, but because uh, they were African American. And uh, he, he said uh, that you are raping our women and you are taking over the country. We should ask ourselves, where did he get this idea that you are taking over our country? And Fox News uh, bears uh, a lot of responsibility uh, for this kind of uh, uh, consciousness in our country. It, it, they have trafficked uh, this kind of uh, political rhetoric of we need to take our country back. This 21-year-old man born in the late 1990s Reminds me, you know, I've, I've got young nephews that age. He, 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 what does he know about this? Someone taught him how to hate. And so we have to condemn the hate crime, condemn this act of terror. But we also have to condemn the kind of hate speech uh, the, that is very often, uh, very often shows up as a kind of coded political speech, a kind of dog whistle, uh, the, 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 the suggestion that the current occupant in the White House is somehow from somewhere else, that he's not one of us. I believe a man who spent six years uh, uh, saying that has now announced that he's a candidate for president of the United States. Uh, this might be cute uh, rhetoric for some, but it's not a joke. It's not a joke at all. And we've seen, again, that it can have very deadly consequences. Uh, well, Reverend Dr. Raphael Warnock, senior pastor of the Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta, we'd like to ask you to stay with us as we move on to this issue of gun control. President Obama's uh, plea, his call yesterday in anger as he responded to the massacre in Charleston. But I also want to thank our guests who have been with us from Philadelphia, Reverend Mark Kelly Tyler, pastor of Mother Bethel AME Church in Philadelphia, as well as Anthea Butler. Uh, associate professor of religion and Africana studies at the University of Pennsylvania. Dr. Warnock, in our next segment, will be joined by a survivor of another, another massacre, Virginia Tech, where 32 students and teachers were gunned down. Stay with us.